and Tango Makes Three by Justin Richardson and Peter Parnell, illustrated by Henry Cole, read by Erica. The special thing about this story is that it is true. If you listen after the story is over, it has an interesting page about the real-life penguins and the zoo where they are. I also suggest putting this video in full screen. You can do that by double-clicking the video or finding the full screen button, usually in the lower right corner. For Lita, for Lucy Jane, and for Maddie and Ben, J-R-M-P-P, -P, to Nate and Penguin Lovers Everywhere, H-C. In the middle of New York City, there is a great big park called Central Park. Children love to play there. It has a toy boat pond where they can sail their boats. It has a carousel in to ride in the summer and an ice rink to skate on in the winter. Best of all, it has its very own zoo. Every day, families of all kinds go to visit the animals that live there. But children and their parents aren't the only families at the zoo. The animals make families of their own. There are red panda bear families with mothers and fathers and furry red panda bear cubs there are monkey dads and monkey moms raising noisy monkey babies. There are toad families and toucan families and cotton top tamarind families too. And in the penguin house, there are penguin families. Every year at the very same time, the girl penguins start noticing the boy penguins, and the boy penguins start noticing the girls. When the right girl and the right boy find each other, they become a couple. Two penguins in the penguin house were a little bit different. One was named Roy, and the other was named Silo. Roy and Silo were both boys, but they did everything together. They bowed to each other, and walked together, they sang to each other, and swam together. Wherever Roy went, Silo went too. They didn't spend much time with the girl penguins, and the girl penguins didn't spend much time with them. Instead, Roy and Silo wound their necks around each other. Their keeper, Mr. Gramsci, noticed the two penguins and thought to himself, they must be in love. Roy and Silo watched how the other penguins made a home, so they built a nest of stones for themselves. Every night, Roy and Silo slept together, just like the other penguin couples. And every morning, Roy and Silo woke up together. But one day, Roy and Silo saw that the other couples could do something that they could not. The mama penguin would lay an egg. She and the papa penguin would take turns keeping the egg warm until finally it would hatch, and then there would be a baby penguin. Roy and Silo had no egg to sit on and keep warm. They had no baby chick to feed and cuddle and love. Their nest was nice, but it was a little empty. One day, Roy found something that looked like what the other penguins were hatching, and he brought it to their nest. It was only a rock. But Silo carefully sat on it, and sat, and sat. When Silo got sleepy, he slept. When Silo was done sleeping and sitting, he swam and Roy sat. Day after day, Silo and Roy sat on the rock.
but nothing happened. Then, Mr. Gramsci got an idea. He found an egg that needed to be cared for, and he brought it to Roy and Silo's nest. Roy and Silo knew just what to do. They moved the egg to the center of their nest. Every day they turned it so each side stayed warm. Some days Roy sat while Silo went for food. Other days it was Silo's turn to take care of, the, of their egg. They sat in the morning and they sat at night. They sat through lunchtime and swim time and supper. They sat at the beginning of the month, and they sat at the end of the month, and they sat all of the days in between. Until one day they heard a sound coming from inside their egg. Peep, peep! Peep, peep, it said. Roy and Silo called back. Squawk, squawk! Peep, peep, answered their egg. Suddenly, a tiny hole appeared in the egg's shell, and then... Crack! Out came their very own baby. She had fuzzy white feathers and a funny black beak. Now Roy and Silo were fathers. We'll call her Tango, Mr. Gramsci decided, because it takes two to make a tango. Roy and Silo taught Tango how to sing for them when she was hungry. They fed her food from their beaks. They snuggled her in their nest at night. Tango was the very first penguin in the zoo to have two daddies. Soon, Tango grew strong enough to leave the nest. Roy and Silo took her for a swim, just like all the other penguin families. And all the children who came to the zoo could see Tango and her two fathers playing in the penguin house with the other penguins. Hooray, Roy! Hooray, Silo! Welcome, Tango! They cheered. <laughs> At night, the three penguins returned to their nest. There, they snuggled together and, like all the other penguins in the penguin house, and all the other animals in the zoo, and all the families in the big city around them, they went to sleep. <coughs> Author's note. All of the events in this story are true. Roy and Silo are called chinstrap penguins because of the delicate line of black feathers that loops under their beaks as if to hold a hat in place. After years of living side by side in Central Park Zoo, they discovered each other in 1998, and they have been a couple ever since. Tango, their only chick, was born from an egg laid by another penguin couple named Betty and Porky. That couple had often hatched eggs of their own, but they had never been able to care for more than one at a time. In 2000, when Betty laid two fertile eggs, Rob Gramsci decided to give Roy, Silo, and one of those eggs a chance to become a family. If you go to the Central Park Zoo, you can see Tango and her parents splashing about in the penguin house along with their friends including Nipper, Squawk, Charlie, Wasabi, and Pee Wee. There are 42 chinstrap penguins in the Central Park Zoo and over 10 million chinstraps in the world, but there is only one Tango.
make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you know when I do other stories. I may eventually re-record this story because I was a little flustered and messed up a little bit of the wording a little bit uh, as I was reading it. And if you would like to know when I do more of these stories outside of Twitter and when I do other GLBT activism projects of mine, check out, you can follow Prop Infinity on Twitter, P-R-O-P. I-N-F-I-N-I-T-Y or you can join the Proposition Infinity group on Facebook.